The PS5 Slim is going to be super cool. We just got some bad news about the Elder Scrolls 6. And has your PS5 started crashing? How's it going everyone? Welcome to PS Ready. This is the midweek news update here on the channel. The schedule got a little flipped around this week just because of all these massive Xbox leaks that happened, but we're back on track here with some awesome PlayStation news. The first thing I wanted to talk about today is the PS5 Slim because this situation is confusing. Sony is still making the current PS5, but now parts from the PS5 Slim are leaking and it actually looks like a pretty decent upgrade. So the intro line I used for this is the PS5 Slim is going to be super cool and that's because it's getting a new fan inside the console and if you don't remember back to the launch of the PlayStation 5 the fan inside the console was really I think the first big controversy that this console had like the little baby PS5 it was like oh it had its first controversy it's taking its first steps and that controversy was uh, there were two different fans being used in the PlayStation 5 one was louder because of the shape of the blades I don't really remember it totally but it was kind of like a non controversy because even the louder fan was not that loud. The PS5 is a relatively silent machine. And then we actually ended up having the exact same controversy with the Steam Deck later on. So I think it's just time for people to accept that consoles are going to have different fans in them because that's an easy part to source from all over the place. And as long as it's spinning at the right RPM, it's gonna keep your console just as cool. But it looks like Sony is upgrading that fan for the PlayStation 5 Slim with a little bit of extra aluminum shielding. And at this point, we're approaching the situation we had with the PS4 Pro and Slim, where with specifically the PS4 Slim, it leaked and was out in the wild. Like someone was able, I think, to go to Walmart and pick one up, bring it home, open it, plug it in and log into it and download some games before Sony even announced the thing. And then they announced it like a couple weeks later. I think it was announced like in November or something like that. And it leaked all the way back in September, which was actually kind of crazy. And I never thought that would happen again, but we're in the situation with the PS5 Slim where we had that guy who posted a video just flipping around the chassis of it and now we're getting parts out in the wild. So I think this thing is definitely going to leak before it's announced because I think Sony's just hanging on to that announcement until after Spider-Man 2 comes out because they don't want to make people not want to buy the Spider-Man 2 console. Either way, when it comes to consoles, cooling is the most important thing, especially with all of these reports about the PS5 overheating. We had the one with Final Fantasy 16 that was very replicatable. I saw some people in the comments saying it was a controversy. It really wasn't. There were plenty of people who were having this issue and it wasn't because their consoles were dirty or because their console wasn't in a ventilated area. It was because of a certain point in the game taxed the console too much and caused it to overheat. And at the Evo tournament, which Sony owns, people were bringing their own fight sticks with long USB cables and they would put their USB cables into the actual console. And then as time went on, they were ripping out the blue plastic that lets you know it's a super speed USB three port and it was rendering their their fight sticks useless. So that's not good, that's overheating. So it's nice to know that one big improvement it looks like Sony's making is with a shielded fan that's going to spin hopefully a lot faster and get the cooling perfectly done inside the console. So a lot of users have been reporting pretty much all week that when they play Baldur's Gate 3 on their PlayStation 5, the game will randomly crash to their desktop, which is super irritating because, you know, it's an RPG. You want to sit down for a few hours every night and get immersed in this world. And nothing is more irritating than a game crashing when you're in the middle of a cutscene, in the middle of a battle or anything, right? Like when a game crashes, it really sucks. I'd say the second worst thing a game can have is traversal stuttering. Like like when you're moving between an area and there's like either a cutscene or characters are talking and then the game hard stutters for a few seconds, nothing pulls me out of a game faster than that. But other than that, those are the two biggest things that I think bother me when I'm playing a game. Now, reportedly this issue has gotten bad enough to where the Baldur's Gate 3 official account had to put out a tweet and basically say, yep, we're aware that this game is crashing on PS5s, but weirdly enough, the issue seems to be related to the PlayStation Network. So all you have to do if you're encountering this problem is switch your PS5 into offline mode. Just remember to switch it back when you're done playing because if it's in offline mode, it might not download updates, it might not download patches for games, it might not give you any of the notifications and it'll stop you from seeing what your friends are doing on the PlayStation Network. I'm pretty sure that when you go into rest mode in offline,
online mode though, when you turn your console back on, it'll automatically flip back into online only mode. So again, it's like the reverse of what I just said. Remember that when you turn your console on out of rest mode until this issue is fixed to just make sure you flip it back into offline mode because you don't want Baldur's Gate 3 to be crashing. I really don't know what's going on with the PlayStation Network. I think Sony's probably doing something behind the scenes with it, either getting it ready for some new features or more realistically, they're upgrading it in some way for the new cloud streaming that's capable of playing PlayStation 5 games. We weren't able to do that in the past, but they've had it in beta lately for specific PS Plus premium users. And eventually you're not only going to be able to stream games from your PlayStation 5 at home, you're going to be able to stream them from the cloud, which is cool. I'm not the biggest fan of cloud gaming. It's never, in my opinion at least, going to be at the point where I would choose it over playing a game that's downloaded to my console. I messed around with it a couple of times here on the channel. I bought the Backbone controller for my iPhone and I figured that would be a decent experience. It was not. I have a great network here. I've talked about it a few times. The experience was terrible. Even when setting it as low as 360p, I got major stutters off of my PS5 and that was on my home network streaming it from my PlayStation 5. I also downloaded the available remote play apps to my iPad Pro and had the exact same experience. Honestly, the only experience I've ever had that was good streaming games from my PlayStation 5 was with the Vitcher glasses, which if you haven't seen my video on those, it was a sponsored dedicated video where I was like, oh man, I don't know if this is going to work. And it totally works. It puts like a 120 inch screen in front of your eyes. They're like AR glasses. But the cool thing that comes along with them is this Vitcher neck band that has its own operating system and it has the PS Play app. So when you set all that up, it's basically like a one-to-one -one experience. There is a little bit of a noticeable delay, I would say, but overall I'd give it like a 9.5 out of 10. So if you really like that experience of having AR glasses in front of your eyes, their PS Play app, which is bundled with their neckband attachment for it, uh, works really extremely well. The only reason I think Sony could be working on stuff behind the scenes is that whenever games like this crash or go down on the PlayStation 5, it's usually because they're working on something. I think it was last year where they were working heavily on making it so you could change your PSN name because that wasn't a feature on the PlayStation Network because it was so held together with duct tape from the PS3 generation being built on top of itself all the way up to the PS5 generation. But you know, games were crashing, the PSN was going down, and then eventually that feature released because they have to do big changes behind the scenes for a lot of this stuff. With the whole situation impending where you're going to be able to stream PS5 games from the cloud and also the PS Portal is coming in just a month or two, that's a good reason as to why the PlayStation Network could be causing problems. It's still frustrating though for obvious reasons because this isn't a free service. We have to pay quite a bit of money for it and they just raised the prices of this service on September 6th. So to raise the prices and then have it be the cause of a game crashing, I'm obviously not happy about that and I think my decision to kind of just ride out my PS Plus Extra subscription and then let it downgrade to PS Plus Essential is the right move just because I have extra and I honestly don't need to use the library of games. I own pretty much every PS5 exclusive, so a lot of the stuff that gets added to it outside of games like Humanity, Sea of Stars, and uh, what was that one game? What the hell was that one game? The cat game. Stray. Outside of Stray, uh, I haven't really used PS Plus Extra all that much, but it did come in handy with those day one releases, and that does show why Game Pass is good for now while they can still afford to release games on it. All right, next up here, we got to talk about Elder Scrolls 6 because the situation around this has been interesting. Obviously, when Starfield launched, it only launched on Xbox. It's not available on PS5, which really sucks, but the conversation then turned to Elder Scrolls 6 because unlike Starfield, which is a new IP, it's kind of weird to think about it as a new IP because it is just like Fallout in space, but it is a brand new IP. It's a new game in Bethesda's universe. So it made a little bit more sense for that to be an exclusive to the Xbox Series X and PC. With Elder Scrolls, it's the Elder Scrolls 6. We've had Elder Scrolls on PlayStation for a while. I think it started with Oblivion. I'm pretty sure Morrowind was only on Xbox and then we got Oblivion on PS3. Then we got Skyrim, of course. The Elder Scrolls Online is on PS3, PS4, and I think PS5. And now Elder Elder Scrolls 6, everyone was looking forward to on PlayStation, but there were a bunch of email leaks that came from Tom Warren over at The Verge, and unfortunately, it looks like uh, Elder Scrolls 6 is not going to be on PlayStation. There was a spreadsheet sort of graph that leaked from these emails, and it showed games from Bethesda like Redfall, and it had a bunch of categories on the graph, and basically it was like, is this a new IP? Yes. Is it coming to PlayStation? No. And the same thing happened for Starfield, but then when you get to the column for the Elder Scrolls 6, it's like, is this a new IP? No. 
is it coming to PlayStation? No. Honestly, this isn't surprising at all to me. I think Microsoft was kind of being cagey about it up until the release of Starfield because they wanted to see if that game would make money on Xbox. And not only is it selling Xboxes, like Xbox Series Xs are selling out everywhere, it's one of the highest purchased games on Steam. It's still consistently getting 200,000 concurrent players at a time. And that doesn't mean that the game sold 200,000 copies. It sold well north of that on PC. That's just how many people were all playing at the same time, which is crazy a few weeks after launch to have a situation like that. So seeing that data and saying, oh, people are happy to buy this game on Xbox Series X, I think Microsoft just made that decision right then and said, no way are we releasing Elder Scrolls 6 on the Xbox. Now you guys know I'm a PlayStation fanboy, right? But my fanboyism for PlayStation kind of just extends to first party. I am fortunate enough to have a really good PC and I'm just going to be real with you guys. I am never going to play a Bethesda Game Studios game on console. Ever since Fallout New Vegas, I played it on my 15 inch MacBook Pro I bought in senior year of high school to take to college. I have bought and played every single Bethesda Game Studios game on PC. I did have Skyrim first on PS3 because when I was in college, uh, GameStop would do these buy two, get one free deals all the time. If I remember correctly, I think I got Dark Souls, Modern Warfare 3, and then I got Skyrim for free. And I just gotta be honest, I ended up selling the box copy on Craigslist to buy another first party PlayStation game. So yeah, uh, ever since New Vegas, I have played every Bethesda game on PC. But I know a lot of other people out there, like the vast majority of PlayStation gamers aren't as fortunate. So it does really suck to have the sixth game in a franchise, uh, especially one as big as Skyrim, which is one of the greatest selling games of all time and one of the greatest games of all time not come to PlayStation for arbitrary reasons. And I know the defense on the Xbox side of this is like, well, Sony keeps games exclusive from Xbox all the time, like Final Fantasy VII Remake. And I don't really have an argument other than I just don't like exclusives. I don't like that there's only going to end up being two companies that own everything in this industry or four, right? Like you have Sony, Nintendo, Microsoft, and then I guess Tencent since it looks like Embracer Group is falling apart right now. Like Gearbox is up for sale, which is crazy to think about. But yeah, it's a crappy situation, but one that completely makes sense after seeing how well Starfield is doing on the Xbox side of the fence. And we did get some other tidbits from this email where Phil Spencer wrote a whole thing to Satya and he was like, hey, uh, I just picked up a PS5 and I think this was in like 2021. And he was like, he called it the Horizon Zero Dawn bundle, but it was the Horizon Forbidden West bundle. And he was just pointing out how interesting he thought it was that Sony only had the PS5 available in bundles at that time with Horizon Zero Dawn. I mean, Horizon Forbidden West. And to me, what I think he was kind of hinting at is that Sony was juicing the sales of that game by including it with every PS5 purchase. But I think when we got sales data for that game, it didn't even end up including bundled sales of the game, it doesn't really matter. That was just a cool bundle back in the day and it followed up the Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart one. And it really just brought me back to that time when every video I did on this channel had to have a little segment in it where I did an update on whether or not the PS5 was available. And honestly, it wasn't until last Christmas, like Christmas 2022, that it actually was as widely available as a PS4 would be. So yeah, unfortunately, if you're looking forward to Elder Scrolls 6 on PS5, you got some disappointing news, but thankfully Sony makes enough great games and we get a bunch of third party exclusive, so I don't think it's that big of a deal. It does really suck, but by that point, you could build a PC. I don't think you're gonna wanna buy an Xbox, but you know, there are other options that are going to be available. And the last news story I have for you guys today is about a brand new bundle with the PlayStation 5. Look, I am convinced at this point that Sony is doing everything they can to just move consoles so they can get them out of their warehouses and make room for the new PS5 Slim. We've gotten console covers. We got a special edition PS5 with Spider-Man plates, which like, if you want a way to move move PS5s as quick as possible. That is the smartest way I can think of, like just throw some Spider-Man 2 plates on it. And then they took it even farther by making sure there were plenty of those consoles available, but virtually none of the actual plates you could buy for your current PS5, which really sucked. And now we have a brand new bundle, which I think is going to be a huge hit in Europe. And that's because the new bundle has EA's new version of FIFA included with it. Now the game is no longer called FIFA. It's called like EA Football Club 2024 or something like that. This issue started because EA kind of strong-armed FIFA and said, hey, this is one of the best-selling games pretty much ever, every single year. People love playing this game. Our fans are asking us for specific upgrades, like, I don't know, being able to buy certain brands of shoes, I guess, in the game or something like that. And FIFA basically told them to kick rocks. So that's exactly what they did. They said, all right, you guys can go find someone else to make the FIFA game. And that's what FIFA is doing. But, you know, EA has this huge cachet of fans built up of their game. So I would expect this game to sell pretty
pretty well. And now that it's in a bundle, that's a really enticing move for a lot of people. You know, it's cooling down in a lot of places. People are spending more time playing video games inside. It's getting darker earlier. I remember when I was growing up, I still get nostalgic for this. Like when I watch cable, I would see commercials for the new Madden. Like a guy would go after work, bring home his Walmart bag, pop it into his Xbox 360 or PS3 at the time and hang out with his friends online. I always thought that was so cool. I was never into sports games, but I thought it was a cool thing to look forward to every year. And we're kind of rapidly approaching that time with September being almost over. So yeah, it's the perfect time for a sports game bundle of a PlayStation 5. But yeah, that about covers it for this PS5 update. Get excited for the weekend video because it is the return of the two host, not podcast podcast with me and Ray. We've tested it out over on Xbox Ready. We found a great way to record it. We've done two of them so far over there. So if you want to check those out, go to the weekend videos on Xbox Ready. Uh, but get excited for the weekend edition of PS Ready. It's hard to keep the Ready channels uh, situated in my mind because it's going to be awesome and we are recording it for this weekend's video. Anyway, guys, that's all I've got for you today. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and set your notifications to all if you haven't already. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and shape on.